Okay, so let's uh, take a look at some of the specs of the Sony XL301. It's running Windows Vista Home Premium, which is obviously great for a machine like this. It's got um, Intel Core Duo, uh, Pro Duo 2 processor, the E6300 processor. Uh, it's very quick, very, it does feel a fast machine, you can see from the Vista Index, it's, it's running well. Um, it's got 2 gig of memory and uh, the video card is a GeForce 7600 GTL with 256 meg of memory on it as well. And the 2 gig of RAM really makes a big difference for Windows Vista and that's why really it feels, I think it feels so smooth and responsive is because it's got, as well as the processor, it's got plenty of RAM so it's not swapping out and paging all the time. And uh, but it, it makes a big difference, I think, when you've got a bunch of memory in there. It's got a 250 gig serial ATA hard, di hard drive in there. And I've mentioned it's got the Blu-ray drive, DVD writer, rewriter, writer. And uh, we'll have a look at some of the ports in a minute, but all the, the sort of standard ports are on there. And as I mentioned, it's got wireless uh, LAN. It's got uh, a network port. And uh, the, this one machine has got dual DVB-T analog hybrid tuners in there um, so you've got the dual DVB-T which is great so you can record two things at once or watch one thing while you're recording another. As a media centre PC I think uh, it, it really makes a good uh, good machine and I, I certainly uh, would consider it uh, if you were looking to, to buy a machine and uh, has a look around the price and this one you can get it for sort of um, so £900 in the UK, I've seen it here at £9.49. Um, so yeah, it's out of stock at the moment, but it is a relatively good value machine. Uh, the Blu-ray uh, is a nice extra function on there. I'm not sure the Blu-ray is listed in these, the Blu-ray version is listed in these, in these prices. Uh, I don't think I have enough Blu-ray to, to test. So in terms of operation, for a media centre PC, it works great. Um, loving the way that the, the media centre works. Very smooth, very responsive, and uh, as you can see, you know, it works great. It's a great clear picture using HDMI, and the way of connecting up HDMI is really good as well. Nice and simple. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the connectivity options on it now. So we're going to look at some of the connectivity options for XL301. Um, we're going to start off around the back and as you can see here there is a pretty full featured uh, rear panel including HDMI which is what I was using then, optical connections, TV cards, all the other traditional connections as well. So let's have a look at some of those. So over here we've got the HDMI connection, like I said I was using that before. That is really nice and simple, it's the first time I've used HDMI, just plug it in and away you go. We've got a wide Ethernet, a USB ports here, uh, Firewire ports, optical in and optical out. And also you could use that for your surround sound receiver. And I've got uh, dual hybrid DBT cards in there uh, for the TV signal. We've got line inputs, line outputs, component outputs, and uh, coaxial outputs, and a, a wireless antenna output there so the wireless network card has got a separate antenna that can fit on there as well you've got the power but notice there's uh, no VGA cable here so it's HDMI only not all DVI um, and really this is more like an AV component than the traditional sort of PC with your mini jacks for your audio so if you're looking for a device to hook up to your AV receiver and your uh, your large TV through HDMI and your optical, this is what I'll be using, uh, then that's the thing to have on this machine. I'm going to turn it around and look at the front. Uh, you can see that. Uh, so we've got uh, the Blu-ray drive on there. It's a shame if I've got a Blu-ray disc. If I get a chance, I'll try and get hold of a disc and tack it onto the end of this video. And if we take the front panel down, so we've got the card readers there, so we've got compact flash, uh, smart media, the Sony uh, Pro um, Magic Gate, 
got two more USB ports, another firewire, microphone, headphones, and uh, video outputs as well. So quite a good featured connections, obviously designed for the uh, AV components. So overall, my impressions of the Sony XL3, but really positive. I've only had the machine for a couple hours to play with, and I'm not really going to get a chance to use it sort of on the, a long-term role in the living room. But I'm really pleased with the device. I do like the way it connects up via HDMI up to the TV and the optical output for my AV receiver. So that's upside work for me. And it's interesting to see actually how uh, I've got used to using the Xbox 360 and Media Center Extender Mode as my way of uh, getting my media sensor content on there. But the actual benefit of having a PC on there means that I can get the web browser and everything else as well as the media sensor content. I guess there's some trade-off on that, the fact that I can just, uh, or, or certainly the family can just switch on the Xbox 360 and get straight into media center and they can just use it that way. I can imagine getting more support issues with having the PC connected up to the TV. Um, but it's nice to have the option anyway on there. Overall, the peripherals are pretty good actually. The the keyboard here, um, I was really impressed with. Uh, it's got some shortcut buttons on here. Um, a lot of keyboards I was, I must admit, I had them use them. But you've got like web browser and email. You've got a nice battery indicator there on the keyboard. And the whole overall the keyboard feels solid and heavy. And um, with the trackpad, the trackpad is excellent, just like a, a laptop trackpad. And then I've got a Sony machine, a Sony laptop, and I use that at work. So. That's fine for me. And overall, sitting the machine, this keyboard on your knee is really good. So I'm impressed with that. Uh, as for the remote, um, fine. You know, it's a MIDI center remote. It does look a bit clunky, but uh, it's got the MIDI center button on there and all the necessary uh, buttons. I must admit, I didn't really use that a great deal. I mainly used the keyboard because that's got everything on there. Um, but overall, impressed with the device. It is a nice MIDI center PC at 950 pounds. Uh, it's a good spec, plenty of RAM in there, and it makes an ideal uh, media center server, certain media center PC, uh, especially if connected to an LCD or a plasma through the HDMI cable. I'm not sure of the desktop machine whether it would be ideal because of the lack of VGA port, but overall I was pretty impressed with that. So, nice machine, links to Sony's website. Uh, in the show notes, I want to say thanks to Sony for sending the machine for a review, and I'm going to have a play around with it, and uh, I'll try and uh, update the blog and the podcast with some more information on it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, so let's uh, stick the Blu-ray disc into the Sony, and uh, I've got the camera here pointed at the Media Center PC screen. So, as on the video before, connect up by HDMI and optical to the audio video receiver. So first of all, you'll see that uh, it's not, certainly not an instant thing. It takes a couple of seconds for the Blu-ray uh, software to load up. And it's using uh, Win DVD rather than Media Center, because Media Center at the box won't play HD DVD or Blu-ray DVDs. If you're in Media Center mode, there is actually a way of launching uh, the Blu-ray software directly from Media Center, and it kind of shells out to this uh, from Media Center. So you, you can see here now that it's loaded in Windows mode, in a window mode, which seems the default. So I'm going to stick that at full screen. Okay. Okay. So you can see here the effect of Blu-ray. Obviously, like I said, through the camera, it's difficult to see. But the experience is pretty good, really. Um, but not unlike DVD. Use it into videos, software. You can do all the stuff the same as using so Power DVD or Win DVD. I'm not going to go through all the. Uh, the extras and stuff that's on the DVD, but Pirates of the Caribbean has got uh, a two disc set, the first disc with the movie on, the second disc with a whole load of extra bits, got extras with interviews and things like that on it. So uh, a nice package, uh, and one thing that I mentioned on the blog before, that with the video uh, rental, you know, as I went to Blockbuster and rented the, the videos out, there was no HD DVD videos to rent, there was only the Blu-ray stuff. So that does make a big difference when you're coming to choose a player.
so that puts me off with the HD DVD not having the uh, rental option but I did notice that as the store the local one that they had a good selection of HD DVDs in there as well as the Blu-ray ones so the, so the retail one there's certainly both options available anyway like I said in the video it's a nice unit and um, I enjoyed the Blu-ray and I enjoyed the film as well so thanks for watching I'll see you next time on the Media Centre show Digital lifestyle.com. Digital lifestyle.